Bruno, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to all of you on your nominations, and thank you for your service. I asked the following two initial questions of all nominees uh, on any of the committees on which I sit, so I'd like to ask uh, each of you, and the response will start with Ms. Harris, and we'll just go right down the line. Since you became a legal adult, have you ever made unwanted requests for sexual favors or committed any verbal or physical harassment or assault of a sexual nature? No. 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 Have you ever faced discipline or entered into a settlement related to this kind of conduct? No. 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 Thank you. Mr. Owens, my home state of Hawaii is still reeling from the catastrophic fuel leak at the Red Hill bulk fuel storage facility. I don't know if you, do you have a familiarity with this facility? Have you ever visited the facility? I've never visited, but I've seen pictures and it's gigantic. It's massive. It is in the order of, uh, in terms of an engineering feat, in the order of Hoover Dam. And um, yeah, it is massive. But you've been asked some questions relating to PFAS, and there are various contamination issues that the military has to uh, deal with. But um, the situation at Red Hill is quite immediate. It led to the widespread water contamination, force, forcing thousands of Navy personnel and their families to leave their homes for months until their safe return could be assured. And due to the leak and the ongoing concerns about the facility safety, DOD has announced its intent to entirely defuel and permanently close Red Hill by the end of 2024. You can imagine what kind of uh, uh, enterprise this is going to be to defuel hundreds of millions of uh, gallons of fuel. So U.S. Navy has proposed a defueling plan, which the Hawaii Department of Health recently rejected in whole since the department plans lacks the requisite detail and specificity necessary for the DOH to fully evaluate how the department will execute safe and expeditious defueling. If you are confirmed, oversight of facilities across the country, including Red Hill, will be under your purview. This year's NDAA currently authorizes $1 billion for the Red Hill Recovery Fund and Congress is expecting to receive a detailed breakdown of how this money will be spent from the department. Delay in providing this justification risks compromising the safe and timely closure of the facility and could further disrupt the community's confidence in DOD in the state. So uh, when all of this happened, of course, the Navy's handling of the, the spill and all that left a lot to be desired, and so the community has a lot of questions, and I would um, <laughs> like you to assure me that defueling closure is completed in a safe and expeditious manner and that you will be uh, take personal um, responsibility along with the, all the people who are going to be involved in this, but uh, uh, in your position. Can I look to you to make sure that the defueling happens safely and uh, in an expeditious manner? Uh, Senator, I absolutely commit to uh, doing everything within the, the purview of the ASTEINE to ensure that the resources that are necessary to safely defuel yes. Red Hill uh, can, uh, in, in alignment with the Secretary's plan is, are, are executed. Yes, and, and our appropriation committees is awaiting a much more detailed defueling plan, so I hope that's something that should you be confirmed, um, that this is another thing that you will um, pay attention to. Again, for you, uh, Mr. Owens, DOD currently has more than 174,000 non-tactical vehicles across the service branches, making it the second largest share of the federal vehicle fleet after the U.S. Postal Service. Earlier this year, I introduced the Military Vehicle Fleet Electri Electrification Act with Senator Warren, King, and others, and included language in the fiscal year 2023 NDAA that would require DOD to transition to fully electric or zero emission non-tactical vehicles by the end of 2030. Mr. Owens, do you agree that transitioning to electric non-tactical vehicles will help combat climate change while helping to ensure our military has the advantage of a modern fleet of vehicles that reduce the military's dependence on oil? Uh, Senator, I think that the 
combination of several investments that are being made on installations, including electric vehicles, but particularly microgrids and the ability for microgrids to uh, provide a backbone for more energy diversity and resilience uh, is a, an excellent reason to proceed as, as you have outlined. I take it that that is a, a yes it's today. A, it's a yes. It's a big yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think we need to move ahead on this kind of transitioning because uh, the DOD is the biggest user of uh, fossil fuels of uh, all of the agencies. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Rona. Senator Tillis, please.